y'all, it's Hope at Crafty Hope, and I am working on a bit of a project that's prompted by Sarah Jo of SJ Designs Jewelry's Honey Do List Challenge. The prompt for February was this beautiful picture her husband Eric had taken of a bird, I think it's a nuthatch, on a limb, and it's very kind of a very wintry scene where it's very stark and a bare limb and all of that and but it was the bird that struck me and I went looking through my tins and found a couple little birds and they both happened to be robins that I thought worked out perfectly and one was kind of a winter scene and one was a, a spring scene and so I decided to use these little wood um what are they laser cut cutouts that Michelle Mock of beads and books sent me to play around with and I'm making a little bit of a flip of pendant. Now I'm using the circle in the center of these laser cut pieces as a frame around these birds and I'm just using a um, sharpie to trace the outside of the square part of those frames and I'm going to cut them down with some good tin snips. Now I use my big heavy duty tin snips to get it down to a workable portion. And I'm using these like finer ones that don't leave teeth marks to get the actual shape on here. Um, as you can see on the left, I've got my winter portion of the scene. And that's a little snowman with a, a robin sitting on his head. And this one is a Mary Inglebright tin that I used that had this little robin in it. And it's hard to tell that it's spring, but it had some flowers and stuff in it and I thought you know it was bright and cheery and, and not as stark as the winter scene. Now I'm double checking here that that piece of tin fits behind that that laser cut piece well and I snipped off just a little bit to get any of that excess off and I'm again snipping just a tad bit more and then I'm going to go and I'm going to trim down the edges. I don't like really pokey pointy corners so I just snip off that pokey portion and in the sanding it kind of curves them a little bit. So and I'm double checking these to make sure they both fit just the way I want. There's my little spring robin and my winter robin. And I think they are absolutely adorable. So the next step in this is to start sanding them down. I'm going to start, and I like to use sanding blocks for this because it gives me something kind of firm to hold on to. And I'm starting with a medium to heavy kind of grit sandpaper, and then I'm going to work down to a more fine grit. I don't know if y'all can hear that in the background. My dog is barking at something. I apologize. <laughs> she's she's crazy. The wind blows and she barks. Um, so there's that fine grit, and I'm going around all the edges, and you can see I'm feeling with my finger between to make sure there's no little burrs or anything and then I finish it off with a bit of steel wool because I love how buttery steel wool just kind of sands things down. So once those are done it's a matter of punching some holes so that I can get those on there. Now I'm making sure everything matches really nicely um, especially at the top edge where those two are going to be connected and I'm checking now the um to make sure. Now I tried to make, because the depth of those frames was a little thick, I couldn't get my Sharpie to go through there to make my marks. So I'm using, first I tried just a little bitty straight pen and that doesn't work. So I use a more heavy doodle, bleh, duty needle to kind of scrape away some of that enamel underneath to show me where I need to punch my holes so that it'll match up well with the holes in the laser cup wood piece. So once I get those, I can go back to, I think, what am I going to do first? Um, I'm going to Hamilton. That, that Those tins had a little bit of a curve to them, and since I want to make sure they match really well, I'm using a just a leather mallet to kind of gently hammer them down. And then I used um, a little hammer to hammer down the... Um, the holes I had punched to make them a little more even. Now I'm going to use my Sharpie here to, to mark the hole on the other 10 and I've got them back to back and that's so that they will flip better and also you know marking it like that um, on the back I don't have to worry about any marks being left when I um with the, from the Sharpie. So once I get that I hammered those down and I've got a couple of fairly large oval jump rings. Now the, the oval helps me make sure that it's it's going to flip the way I want and that the tin won't slide off in the process. So I'm just opening those and putting the tin on them. Um, first I'll put it through the pendant and then I've got that tin back to back and I'm slipping it through the other hole that I made and then closing that 
jump ring up and now I'm going to show you how it flips nicely there's our little snowman and you flip that around and there's our little spring robin now the the jump rings are a little fiddly they need to be positioned just right but it works great and I've got a small piece of ball chain here, not small piece, a necklace length of ball chain here. And I'm just slipping it through the top of both of those jump rings. And I'm going to show you that it works just fine with the chain on there as well. So this was a lot of fun to make. Thanks to Sarah Jo for the challenge and her husband, Eric, and to Michelle for the laser cut pieces. It came together beautifully. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for coming by. Bye.